whether it's for fun or if you have an internship, um, you can get to those major cities pretty easily. Um, these are the main enrollment figures on campus. We're just under 8,600 students on campus. We have that perfect sweet spot, not too big, not too small campus size. I love it because it's not too big to the point where you have to take buses to get everywhere on campus and you have a big giant lecture hall style class for all of your classes. But it's also not too small either to the point where you're seeing the same people every single day. Um, the average class size is only 25 students with a 15 to one student to faculty ratio. So for every 15 students on campus, there is one full-time dedicated faculty member on staff to assist um, our students. Um, now, as far as the academic profile goes, we do have 46 majors and 73 minors um, on our campus. So lots of different areas to study. Um, we have four endowed schools and one college on campus. So uh, the first school on the left is the Fulton School of Liberal Arts. So whether you want to be a liberal art major, you'd be within this school. Um, some popular majors include communications, so that's public uh, PR, journalism, uh, multimedia productions. Um, we have some great internship opportunities for those students. Um, they have done internships at places like the Walt Disney World and the Baltimore Orioles. Um, our art degree is very popular as well. Um, we have two different types of art degrees, a Bachelor's of Art and a Bachelor's of Fine Art. Uh, the Fine Art degree has different tracks like uh, graphic design, uh, 2D, 3D studio, we even have um, a hot glass building track as part of the fine art program as well. Um, the next school is the Purdue School of Business. That's where I graduated from. Um, the Purdue School of Business is an AACSB accredited business school. Um, only about 5% of the schools in the nation have that kind of accreditation for the business program. Um, if you guys have heard of Purdue Chicken, uh, Frank Purdue, who is the founder of Purdue Farms, is a Salisbury alum, and the Purdue family has poured a lot of money into the business school. Um, that's why he has a school named after him. Um, the Purdue School also is really big on entrepreneurship. So every spring semester, they hold a competition called um, Gold Cage, very similar to the short Shark Tank, um, where you can actually pitch an uh, idea to a panel of judges, and they award money to the best ideas. Um, also, the, the actual short Shark Tank has come to our campus and uh, has held auditions for the actual show. Um, next is the Henson School of Science and Technology. Um, so if you want to be a STEM major, you'll be within the Henson School. Um, biology is the biggest major on our campus. So, and for fall 2021, we have a brand new pre-med track as part of the biology program. So if you want to be a pre-med major or a pre-vet major or a pre-dentistry major, um, we have all these different tracks for you to be a part of as part of the biology program on campus. And then last but not least, if you want to be a teacher, um, you'd be within the Seattle School of Education. Um, we have a great teacher program on campus. Um, we were founded in 1925 as an all-women teacher school. Um, so our reach go back to our education program on campus. Um, we do put you in a classroom observing your freshman year of college. And we have, do have a 100% pass rate on the practice exam uh, to get your teaching license. And then last but not least is a new school on campus, the College of Health and Human Services. Um, we had all these majors before. Uh, they were just dispersed amongst the other schools on campus. Nursing is the most popular major within this school and one of the most rigorous programs on campus as well. Nursing is a two-step admissions process. So you were a pre-nursing major your first two years and then applied to the clinical program your spring semester or sophomore year of college. Um, we do have one of the highest pass rates on the NCLEX exam in the state of Maryland as well at 96% uh, for first time uh, uh, test takers. Um, there is also an honors college on campus. So the honors college is a separate admissions process from the university. So once you get accepted to the university, you can then apply into the honors college. Um, for an incoming freshman, the average GPA is around a 3.5, 12.50 on the SAT, or a 25 on the ACT. Um, the dean has really emphasized involvement outside the classroom, like clubs, activities, and community service. Um, and there is also another essay to write, explaining why you, you want to be a part of the Honors College community. The Dean does read every single essay for every single application. Um, now, as far as the perks of being in the Honors College, um, you get the big classes before, uh, before anyone else on campus. Uh, there are scholarships just for being in the Honors College as well. They take classes together all four years. The classes are capped at 20 students per class, so even smaller than the university average. Uh, they have financial support for research. They take trips together. Um, and they do live together in the same residence hall the first two years. 
Now, these are some of the resources available to students as four-year tuition on campus. Most of them are housed in this building on the screen. This is called the Economic Commons. This is our brand new library. Um, this building opened in 2016. It's my favorite place on campus. Um, this houses 25,000 students who are guaranteed to find a spot in here and houses a lot of our resources. Like um, the Writing Center is help, um, housed within here and the Writing Center will help you with any paper on campus, whether it's for English or another class on campus, whether you have a whole paper done or just a few sentences, the Writing Center will help you out in hour long blocks. Uh, the Center for Student Achievement is the on-campus tutoring support center. So if you need help with any class on campus, we have tutors available for you. We also have coaches for study skills, time management, and organization skills too. And then career services is great. Um, they help with resumes, cover letters, interview skills, have to address for interviews. Uh, they hold job fairs all throughout the semester. Um, they'll help you locate a job up to five years after you graduate college as well. Um, most majors on campus do require some sort of internship to graduate from college and all the majors offer some sort of internship component. So you can definitely use career services to help you kind of um, find that internship uh, for your major. Um, one of the keys to um, retention on campus is involvement. Um, so we have a pretty high retention rate uh, for students and we have over 120 clubs on campus. So lots of ways to get involved on campus. And as you can see on the screen, there's um, the majority of our students are involved in at least one club on campus and also are involved in group life. Um, so whether you want to participate in student government, um, we have cheerleading, um, we have club sports, we even have hide and go seek. Uh, so lots of cool, interesting clubs on campus. And because of our campus size, it's also easy to, uh, to start your own club on campus. So you need yourself, um, none of the students with the same interests as you, and a faculty advising member, and you started your own club on campus. Um, so we do have 21 Division III teams. Um, our school is best known for, for uh, lacrosse. We have a phenomenal lacrosse team. Um, we also are great in football. Um, I know last year we were undefeated in football and made it to the uh, Sweet 16 in the playoffs. Um, we also do have relatively new athletic facilities. Um, our football field hockey and lacrosse stadium is brand new as of um, about two years ago. Brand new softball and baseball stadiums, brand new soccer stadiums, brand new tennis uh, courts as well. As I said earlier, if you don't want to play Division three sports, we do have club and intramural sports available as well. If you just want to play something for fun against other Salisbury students for a t-shirt and breaking rights on campus. Now on the housing, so we do guarantee housing for two years on campus. So freshmen and sophomores actually have to live on campus the first two years. Um, as an incoming freshman, if you want to have a car on campus, you can. Um, it's only $75 for the whole year to park on campus, which so is actually pretty affordable as well. Um, we do two, two different types of housing for students on campus. We do have what's called suite style housing, which are the three pictures on the screen here. And suite style housing is a, a Jack and Joe style. So you have two bedrooms, connected to one bathroom. That's a total of four people to one bathroom. And we also do have what's called cluster style housing. And cluster style housing uh, um, is the high rise building picture here. Um, and that's five rooms connected to one bathroom. So that's a total of 10 people to one bathroom. I lived in the cluster style housing my freshman year, and it's not, a, it's not that bad. Um, house shaping does clean all the bathrooms and all the common areas multiple days a week. Um, paper towels, soap, and uh, toilet paper is provided for you as well. Um, all the residence halls have been renovated within the last five years and include heat, air conditioning, majority of them have carpeting as well. Um, so they're all really nice places to live. Um, if you were to transfer into Salisbury, um, transfer housing is available on a first come first serve basis. Um, the food on campus is also really good. It's one of the highlights on campus. Um, I had a meal plan all four years and those students also have some sort of meal plan all four years as well. Um, our dining hall is uh, has different stations like pizza, um, burgers, rotisserie, sandwiches, make your own omelet for breakfast. If you like Chipotle, they have a burrito and bowl station. So lots of good dining options in, in the dining hall. Um, all of the food is done in-house. So we don't outsource any of our food to a third party. It's all done within the university. Um, there are also numerous, uh, numerous satellite dining locations all throughout campus. Um, we have Chick-fil-A on campus. There's a pizza place on campus. Um, Hungry Minds Express is a Wawa style eatery, order the food on the computer screen and they make it and uh, you pick it up. Um, so lots of good satellite locations as well. Um, with each meal plan we offer, we give you what's called dining dollars. 
Those dining hours can be used at any of the on-campus locations like Chick-fil-A or their pizza place on campus. If you don't use all your dining hours in the fall semester, they, roll, they will roll to the spring semester that way they don't go to waste. Now on the financial aid, um, so the most important thing is to complete the FAFSA, which opened up a few days ago. Um, the FAFSA is really important. I know it takes some time, but most scholarships, um, both at Salisbury and also um, if you're applying to um, outside scholarships, do require a FAFSA to be, to be completed. So take the time out to complete the FAFSA. Um, Need-based aid for our students does get awarded in mid-February. Um, when you do apply to us, you are considered for merit based scholarships automatically based on your GPA. If you have test scores, we use those test scores, and we give rankings uh, for your course rigor um, for the classes you've taken in high school. Um, for being from New Jersey, um, students automatically receive what's called the Good Neighbor Scholarship. That Good Neighbor Scholarship is $6,000 a year off of the ISA tuition here for all four years. You do not need to apply for that. That is given to you automatically just for being from New Jersey. Um, these are the application deadline dates. These dates don't change. So if you're applying to us next year or this year, these will be the application deadlines. Um, there's three major deadlines. The, uh, the first one is early decision. Early decision is the binding agreement, meaning if you get accepted to Salisbury on, under early decision, you are required to attend Salisbury for the fall semester. Um, the perk of our early decision is that we give the best consideration for admission when applying early decision. So if you're not really sure about your GPA or test scores in high school, but you really love Salisbury, um, I would encourage you to apply early decision for that best consideration for admission. The other two um, deadlines are non-binding. So you can apply to as many schools as you want. Um, with early action, that deadline is December 1st, and you hear back from us by January 15th. So it's still pretty early on. That gives you plenty of time to come back to visit campus again um, before May 1st, because May 1st is that national deposit deadline date when you decide where you want to go to school. So I always push students for the early action deadline because there is no negative in applying earlier and in getting that response back earlier as well. Um, if you are applying to multiple schools, use the Common App to save you time. If you're just applying to a handful of schools or not, maybe not on the Common App, I recommend the Salisbury University application. It is a little bit shorter than the Common App. So like I said, I am the admissions counselor for New Jersey. So if you are applying to Salisbury from New Jersey, um, I will be the one reviewing the application. And this is what I look for, your high school transcripts, uh, your, I look at your test scores. Now for fall 2021, because of COVID-19, we are test optional. We used to be test optional with a 3.5 GPA minimum. However, we did take away that um, GPA because I know with COVID-19, they have canceled a lot of test uh, dates. So if you haven't taken the SAT or ACT because of COVID-19, that's okay. I would apply test optional. Um, if you have taken the tests, I would still encourage you to send those scores to us. You can still apply test optional and not and send the scores to us. And we just won't look at those scores for admission purposes. When you do apply test optional, we do put a greater emphasis on your involvement, your course rigor, your essay, and, recommend, and recommendation letters. And as far as your recommendation letters, we need just one to complete your application, although we will accept up to three. And then if you were to transfer into Salisbury, you need 24 transferable credits, whether it's from a two-year school or a four-year school, a 2.0 QN of GPA, and as long, as long as you didn't get in trouble in school, you were admitted into Salisbury as a transfer student. Uh, we have one application, uh, which is the Salisbury University application, which I would encourage students to use when applying to Salisbury under a transfer student. And then last but not least, um, if you have not visited campus, we are open for um, information sessions and tours. Um, so you can come in person for an information session. Um, it's a half hour info session followed by an hour and a half tour of campus. We have them Monday through Friday at 9.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. And you can sign up online. My email address is also below. Like I said, I am the admissions counselor for New Jersey. So if you have any questions, my email address is on the screen there. Feel free to uh, shoot me an email and I'll be more than happy to reach out to you with um, any help that you need during the application process. Um, but at this time, um, do you guys have any questions for me about the university that I uh, maybe didn't cover in this presentation or that you want more information on?
and feel free to use the uh, Q&A feature um, if you have any questions. Colin, maybe you could review some questions that you know are frequently asked. Yeah, sure. Um, so one of the like, well, one of the questions I get a lot was the test optional. Um, for for future um, classes, I'm not sure how um, if we're going to go back to the 3.5 GPA or not. Uh, but as of right now, we are fully test optional um, with no minimum GPA. Do you have um, so actually, um, one of the questions is, what are, what are the required classes for freshman and sophomore year? Um, it depends on your major. Um, when you are coming in as a freshman, you are assigned an advisor your first year. So your advisor actually does um, make your schedule for you that first semester coming in. So you don't have to worry about picking your own classes. Your advisor actually does that work for you and will put you in a couple of classes within your major and also a, a couple of general education classes that all sophomores you need to take. Um, and we also do take into consideration any AP classes you may have taken in high school, any dual enrollment classes you took through community college, um, when we do pick your classes that first semester coming in. What other questions can I help answer about the university? Um, so one of the things I often get a lot um, is if Salisbury is a suitcase school. Um, so the answer is no. Like I said, I'm from New Jersey. I never went home on the weekends except during my break. So Thanksgiving break, winter break, spring break, and then summer vacation is when I went home. I never felt the need to go home on the weekends because there was so much to do on campus. Um, because we have the two-year on-campus living requirement, um, students do stay on campus. They don't go home a lot. Um, so I always, I always had friends on campus. Um, there was always something to do on campus. So I was never bored um, during my time on campus. I loved my time at Salisbury. Other questions for me? Okay, so I think we're done. If you don't have any more questions, then um, we can certainly wrap this up. Okay, well, thank you very much for that, Colin. Um, just a few closing things for our students. Just want to let you know that when you go to close out of the session, you will it, you will get a survey window that opens that opens up and it's just four quick questions and we'd really appreciate your input want to know what you thought of it also want to remind you that the recording will be posted on the website um, and also remind you to sign up for more sessions and thank you everyone for joining us and thank you Colin you did a great job thank you all right thank you everybody bye now <laughs>